If you just joined us on the system after dark, this is a homegrown number, courtesy of E3 and Cracker. Bula, how's it going? I'm D, your host on the system after dark, right here on Today FM. Today is hit music. You can catch me weeknights at 7 p.m. That's from Monday to Friday, only on the home of today's hit music. And don't forget, that's D with you every weeknight on the system after dark. This is FPC News. I'm Amrita Priya Darshni. In this bulletin, local businesses still cheating the tax system. Prime Minister Varenge Bainimarama warns anyone encouraging political violence will face the full brunt of the law. And Methodist Church plans to move all operations to Ndavri Lebu. Well, first up in our news tonight, Ratu Kandavulevu School has won its first Coke Zero Dean's title in 10 years after defeating Morris Brothers High School 8-5 this afternoon. We'll have more on the game in our sports segment. The government is concerned that some businesses are cheating the tax system and they need to be singled out. Opening the 2015 Fiji Business Forum this morning, Ayas Sayed Kayum says the business community in Fiji need a concerted approach to identifying those involved. Chanel Sivan reports. Manufacturing service and infrastructure giants of the country today came together, brainstorming with policy makers as to how they can make investment in Fiji worth every dollar. Acting Prime Minister Ayas Sayed Kayum directly saying, some businesses are still rigging the system and cheating the taxation, depriving many Fijians of their share of growth. My appeal to you today is, please understand that we need to take a collaborative approach. You also, as a group, need to be able to, if we are concerned about the future, need to be able to identify people within your sector who are rigging the system. I, I'm saying this again and again, because there is a huge amount of income leakage. He says if businesses get their act in order, the government will make more revenue and will be able to fulfill its obligation by making better roads, providing electricity, spending in the health sector and investing in the education sector. There was a survey that was done that said that one third of the value of our GDP is in the black economy. So if you take today's figures of $8 billion, one third of that is about $2.5 billion unaccounted for. Said Kim says the government is however operating on a deficit budget and is able to fulfill the plight of the people. The 250 billion dollars is uncaptured and even if you take 15 percent of that as revenue collection that will significantly significantly boost our ability to have more revenue. That will significantly improve our ability to have perhaps a surplus budget. One of the main concerns also raised today is the inclusion of female board members in the corporate sector, which is not happening. Chanel Shivan, FBC News. The Prime Minister has made a stern call to the nation that if anyone encourages political violence, they will face the full force of the law. The call comes after more people are charged with sedition and urging political antagonism in the past few days. Akusita Tale reports. We have the means to deal with any challenge to the authority of the state and we intend to do so with every legal means available to us. There will be no so-called independent states established in Fiji. With more than 50 people now charged with sedition and urging political violence, Prime Minister Vorenge Ben Marama is reminding all citizens that the general security of the nation is safe. These cases are before the courts. And as I've also said in uh, the Itokyo uh, Vernacle, I cannot comment on them directly. But as Prime Minister, I want to reinforce what the Police Commissioner has already said, that the situation is under control and that there is no need for the public to be alarmed. Baini Marama has also reminded the nation not to be swayed by those who seek to divide the country and not listen to lies and false promises as those found to be breaking the law will be punished. If they talk about division, they spread lies. 
stand up to them. Tell them that they are wrong. Tell them about all the positive developments in Fiji. Tell them to think about the future and tell them to think about our children. The public is reminded to report to the police any illegal activity that they see or hear. The Prime Minister emphasizes the onus is on every Fijian to keep the country stable and safe. Akusita Talei, FBC News. Police are investigating the circumstances surrounding the death of an Asian national on board a fishing vessel in the Tahitian waters. Police spokesperson Atunaisa Sokomori says the man is alleged to have been killed by another crew member who is now in police custody. The incident is alleged to have happened on the 30th of last month. The vessel ran aground on a reef near Ngao while on its way to Fiji and the crew were rescued by a passenger boat yesterday. The Methodist Church of Fiji has plans to move its head office in Suva to Davuilevu Nasori, the center of the Methodist community. This was revealed at the official opening of the Methodist Church Festival of Praise and Gift or Sulevu at Furnival Park in Turek this morning. Tokasa Rainima has more. The festival was opened with a $203,000 donation by Methodist Church members in Australia and New Zealand. The donations that are given during this week, uh, whatever size they're given, are going to one of our projects. Um, that particular project uh, that we have earmarked for this year is the building on of, of an official residence for our uh, uh, president of the Methodist Church in Fiji in our compound in uh, Davi Levu. Reverend Bhagwan says the Methodist Church shares a long history with the Wilewu and it would like to slowly move its operations there to help the church unite. So we have our, uh, our departments, our head office, our training center all in the same area. And so um, the understanding is for the first step in that is to build uh, an official residence for, for the president of the church. Moving to Nosori will free up the rest of the properties in Suva to develop so it eases the burden on church members by trying to raise funds from development activities. Meanwhile, hundreds of choirs are expected to sing at the week-long Methodist Festival of Praise. So it's very much a festival of praising, of uh, fellowship, and as you can see, the stalls that we have are protecting uh, our members from the rain so that they can be comfortable, they can uh, enjoy the, the music and the singing that will be taking place. And, uh, you know, in true Christian spirit, we see this as showers of blessings. The conference proper for the pastors and delegates is expected to start on the 24th of this month at the Centenary Church in Suva. Tokas Reinima, FBC News. The National Fire Authority is still investigating a fire incident in Nalovo, Nandi. NFA Chief Executive John O'Connor says they received a call at around 3.40 p.m. yesterday and firefighters responded immediately. They managed to contain the fire from spreading to a service station and sawmill nearby. The cause of the fire is still unknown. Rainy and wet Suva weather fails to dampen spirits as people turn up in numbers for opening of the 2015 Hibiscus Festival. That's after the break. Welcome back. You're with FBC News. Regular reviews and improvements are carried out at Fiji's four sugar mills to ensure they comply with the occupational health and safety standards. Recent incidents at one of the mills, one in which resulted in the death of a worker, has called for a greater need to improve compliance. Ritika Pratap has more. The recent death of a mill worker and the injury of another has put the FSC's safety compliance into question. OHS 
is part and parcel of any operations mm -hmm. and the sugar mills are no different. Mm -hmm. that, that happens, you've got OHS committees that meet on a regular basis, comes up with improvements as, as they see things that needs to be improved or fixed or remedied, etc. FSC Executive Chair Abdul Khan points out that even though FSC has existing OHS rules, recent incidents have shown there is a need for improvement. Basically, if we look at the accident in Rarawai, there's three, three lots of uh, investigation. One's done by, from the police perspective, the second one from the Ministry, ministry of Labour, and third, obviously, internally by FSC as well. Mm -hmm. So out of that investigation, whatever comes out that actually means that we've got to enhance certain things, mm -hmm. those things will be implemented. Khan says it is also mandatory for casuals who work at the mill during the crushing season to keep themselves up to date with OHS standards. Whenever these people come on site, what we do do is actually take them through an OHS and get them to agree on what the OHS practices of the mills are, of their of the workplaces, so they are aware of the dangers and the risks when they're working in those areas. Ararawai mill worker died last month after the conveyor belt he was trying to fix started moving suddenly and he was trapped. In a second incident, another mill worker suffered burns when he fell into a vessel full of hot water. FSC is investigating the two reports. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Climate change will once again take center stage in the 2015 Hibiscus Festival, which was officially opened this afternoon. Fiji and the rest of the Pacific are currently affected by climate change, threatening our basic rights. Sharin Lata reports. The rainy wet conditions that normally accompanies the Hibiscus Festival did not dampen spirits today. As people turned up in numbers to be part of the official opening of the week-long event. Leading the parade through town were the reigning queen, king and teen contestants who will by the end of the week hand over the crowns to the new winners. The theme for this year's festival is climate change, communities adapting from the ridge to the reef. There is no denying that climate change is this generation's challenge and needs action by one and all. We in Fiji and the Pacific are only too acutely aware of the shocking impacts of climate change in the form of devastating floods, historic droughts and the erosion of our coastlines forcing communities to relocate. So far three villages in the country have been relocated due to climate change while another 45 villages need to be relocated. Paya Square says the impact of climate change poses threat to our basic human rights. Variation in the climate with this year recording one of the coldest winters in the history of the southern hemisphere. We are in August and it is still cold and we are expecting this to continue for a few more weeks. Meanwhile, at the FBC stage, it's Mirchi night tonight, and the public will be able to meet their favorite Mirchi FM personalities during the show. Thirteen queens are contesting for the hibiscus crown this year. Sharin Lata, FBC News. The Environmental Levy Fund, which is administered by the Maritime Safety Authority of Fiji, has a balance of more than $5 million. According to the MSEF acting CEO John Tunindao, the accumulative fund was established in 2013 to deal with pollution and potential pollution in our maritime zone. Maggie Boyle reports. Making a submission before the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Foreign Affairs and Defence, MSAF Acting CEO John Tunindao explained how the Environmental Levy Fund works. The pollution levy can only be used for these purposes to meet the cost of the Marine Spill Pollution Advisory Committee, if there's any, to purchase plant equipment or any other thing to make preparation for or to implement or assist in implementing any response to oil spills within Fiji waters. I think this is a very important point because we need, the state needs to be prepared for any major incidents that may occur from ships that are sailing in our waters. The committee earlier this week received public submissions deliberating on eight treaties. Among them and of particular interest is the International Convention on the Prevention of Pollution from Ships. Uh, the committee has been kind of uh, stuck on this third environmental, in terms of environmental living. And everyone seems to be officials focused on 
just oil spills. And again, that's why we wanted to look into the report to see uh, that risk assessment, whether it covered chemicals other than uh, oil spills. Is that the case? Tunin explained that recent risk strategies are now being reviewed to include other risk factors. In the degree it states the national response tragedy, from the national response tragedy comes down to the net plan, which I know that the uh, committee already knows has already been approved by cabinet. The national marine oil spill contingency plan, which deals with the nitty gritties of how the state will respond to any tier one or tier one, tier two, tier three spills. The committee is expected to finalize its report next week and recommend either ratification or not at Parliament's next sitting from August the 24th to the 28th. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Over 500 heads of primary schools from around the country gathered in Tavuki Kandabu in the last two days for the Fiji Head Teachers Association annual conference. This is the first time the conference is being held on the Maritime Island, which has close to 30 schools. Education Minister Dr. Manda Reddy says they chose to have the conference in Kandavu as they wanted the teachers to get out of their comfort zone network at the grassroots level so that they are more aware of the challenges faced by the maritime schools. The conference identified loopholes in the primary and secondary sector of the education system and how to deal with it. This allows you to all get together, share your issues, share how problems in your country, how you are developing in your particular district or school or region. Very important critical issues. And you can do it here. And also, answers you sought from our senior colleagues, the director of the here. And today, the director of the here also, because his by how you can hold. The conference ended yesterday. A village in Rewa has set up a fish pond and a chicken coop to help supplement meals for its soon to be built early childhood education center. Eleanor Trangayview reports. With the construction of an early childhood education center expected to start soon, villagers of Lokia in Rewa are finding ways of looking after their children when they are in kindy. The fish pond is neatly fenced and this chicken coop to house chickens. When they are ready to be harvested, they can be sold to supplement meals for our kindergarten students. Over 3,000 two-week-old fries or baby fish are already in this pond and the structure is to house 50 egg-laying chickens. Save the children Fiji, then uh, give uh, uh, around about 25 grand uh, for this package. Uh, the package that includes, uh, once again, the fish pond, the fence, the chicken pen, uh, the fish feeds, the chicken feeds, the chicken pen uh, and uh, the cage. The government, through the Provincial Development Office, is working with the villagers to ensure they have the necessary skills and expertise to sustain the project for the long-term benefit of the students. We need uh, to sustain the project. Eh? Probably if they can provide half price, or a price that is uh, reasonable enough uh, so that they can keep on uh, rolling the project and be able uh, to feed uh, their children well in the near future. This week, animal health production officers and fisheries officers will be training villagers on the care and maintenance of the fish pond and chicken coop. Bank officers will also be talking about financial literacy during the training. Eleanor Turangaiviu, FBC News. Stay tuned, coming up in sports, new winner hoist Dean's Trophy. And Namosi to face Nanronga in Skipper Cup final. Choo choo choo! Hey hey, Namaste Fiji. Aapke har ek problem ke dawa lekar main aa gayi hu. No se bara baje tak aapki saheli reno. Choo choo choo! Forty ne? Twenty ka dikhna hai. मैं हूँ ना आपके साथ में मिर्ची एफएम पर 9 से 12 बजे तक मंडे टू फ्राइडे मिर्ची इट्स हॉट
Welcome to FPC Sports. Now, as mentioned earlier, RKS defeated Morris Brothers High School in the final of the Coke Zero Deans. Both teams were evenly matched in the first half, with Morris leading 5-3 at halftime. But RKS scored a try in the second spell and held on to win the match in an epic climax to the Deans Trophy competition. Here are some of the highlights. RKS was also successful in the under-19 final, beating Lomaivuna High School 8-6. Queen Victoria School claimed titles in the under-14, 15, 16 and 17 categories. Skipper Cup defending champions Nanrunga will face Namosi in the Skipper Cup final next weekend. The Stallions fended off a strong challenge from Suva to win 21-17 in the semi-final at Prince Charles Park this afternoon. And a long kick, no influence of the breeze. And the flags go up all on the ground. It's slowed down enough for the defence to get across and, and close them up. And out it comes, the first try in the making. And the try, it's the man who's just been on the bench. Then off it comes off the back and oh, some bad work in there. A drop ball that makes it an opportunity for Nanrunga. They just swooped in on... Meanwhile, Namosi upstaged Nandi in the second semi-final, beating the host 18-13. On two, and here's the drive going through. Can I get through? No, the defence gets across fast, as there was a bit of hesitation. And here's Namosi again. They get a try. Namosi, you get it over. A quick take by, by Nandi. Do they hold him up? The try is... Uh, is up. Gets right up after it, and the ball is on the ground. And coming through, and taken by by Namosi and Namosi did take it they get it in they go in underneath the posts and Namosi have scored a try the skipper cup will be held next weekend the victorious Rewa football side took time out to celebrate its triumph in the Inc mobile battle of the Giants tournament last weekend the players and officials showed their appreciation for the fans who supported the Delta Tigers until the final whistle Chalindo Dakavaka has more <laughs> Music and merrymaking was the order of the day in Nusori as the town joined the Rewa football side in their Battle of the Giants victory celebration. Uh, the event today is uh, all about uh, players with the fans. Uh, uh, nothing to to reward the, the players at the moment. Uh, we leave it till next uh, weekend. But uh, all of uh, today's uh, activities is uh, mainly to to get uh, the fans uh, involved in uh, the celebration, uh, have uh, photo shots with the players and trophy. The fans played a crucial role in the Delta Tigers' success during the tournament and today was about giving back to the loyal supporters. Uh, they kept uh, the support from day one and uh, continued till the last day. And uh, it's fans like, uh, like this that uh, they've put on uh, the boys uh, uh, to perform uh, well and uh, achieve what we need to achieve. Rondu says the buck will not stop here as his side prepares for the upcoming IDC and the Pacific Cup in New Zealand. Thailand or Kavaka. FBC Sports. The Fiji Pearls did not finish in the top 10 rankings in the Netball World Cup in Australia after losing to Samoa 54-51 this afternoon. The national side got off to a good start, outscoring Samoa 16-10 in the first quarter. This was to be the only time that Fiji outscored their island rivals as Samoa mounted a strong comeback in the remaining three quarters. Fiji will now face Scotland tomorrow for the 11th spot playoff. Sports enthusiasts in Tavua will benefit from a new $98,000 multi-purpose court opened by Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama yesterday. Bainimarama says money spent in the new facility is well spent as it is an investment in the future of local sport. He adds it is also an investment in the sporting future of the country. An increasing number of young Fijians are using their sporting prowess uh, to carve out lucrative professional careers for themselves. And we owe it to them to give them the best we can afford and to encourage others to take the same path. Baini Marama says sport is one of the best ways to unite our country and there is no doubt that Fiji has entered a golden age of sport.
It was cloudy periods with some showers over Kandabu, the eastern and interior parts of the larger islands, and mainly fine elsewhere. A trough of low pressure lies to the west of Fiji and is gradually moving eastwards towards the group. It is expected to affect the group till Monday. Well, max maximum temperatures remained well below 30 degrees today. Bar recorded 29, Nandi and Savu Savu 27. Suva Pencil the lowest at 25 degrees, while no information was recorded for Lotoka. Lambasa managed a high of 30. As for tomorrow, occasional showers over most places, isolated heavy falls are expected. Moderate easterly winds, fresh at times, moderate to rough seas. The outlook for Monday, occasional showers. Our main points again, local business is still cheating the tax system. Prime Minister Varenge Bainimarama warns anyone encouraging political violence will face the full brunt of the law. And Methodist Church plans to move all operations to Dambui Levu. Now to our poll segment. This week we ask, do you think Fiji underestimated its pool opponents at the Netball World Cup? You can visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email, citizenseyes.fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FBC News. If you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. Good night.